the vaccine approval um, is welcome news. Um, it is really uh, apropos to what you were just showing, um, a necessary shot in the arm for responding to this pandemic and the surge of cases that we're seeing. Um, there is vaccine hesitancy out there, no question about it. Um, and I want to really speak to the audience here today and tell you all um, that these vaccines are undergoing stringent review, looking at both the efficacy and safety. Um, there have been indep independent review boards for the FDA as well as CDC um, to look at the data. Um, Kaiser Permanente, as you uh, referenced, did participate in both of these trials in Washington State as well as California. Um, so we have actually firsthand knowledge and experience um, with the trials and know that they were done well and effectively. Um, and we do have confidence that these vaccines are going to be the start of the end of this pandemic. Well, and I've seen uh, others who are administering them say, you know, hospitals and so forth, that I think as more people uh, do get the vaccine, it makes others more comfortable with getting it themselves. So, you know, at the same time, we're still a long, long ways away from this hitting the majority of the population. What do you think is going to happen in the meantime? I think one of the most important things is that people still need to keep their guard up. So when it comes to the basic public health measures, uh, washing your hands, wearing a mask, keeping your distance, all those things are going to be key. And in particular, um, with the coming holiday, um, you really, you know, staying with your family um, and your immediate bubble, if you will, and not going outside that bubble is going to be really key because that will actually help stem the tide of infection in January. Because, of course, to your point, um, really, the availability of vaccine uh, for the general public is going to occur in the middle part of 2021. Right. I, I guess my final question, as we get anecdotal reports, like the person who had a, the allergic reaction to receiving the vaccine, and we think about you know how to track and in some ways have accountability for vaccine recipients uh, with so much of the population getting this at once, so that if there are issues in the months or even years ahead, um, that those are, or th that the patients have, you know, some awareness about it. Um, I, you know, I, I guess my question is, what should people do upon receiving the vaccine? Is it enough to kind of hang out where it was administered for a few minutes? You know, like they sometimes say with a flu shot, stay in the area for 10 to 15 minutes, that kind of thing. Does there need to be, you know, a checkup with your doctor? Um, what, what would you say? So a couple of important things. The current recommendation is actually to monitor uh, a patient who's received the vaccine for 15 minutes. So we, in fact, have those processes in place uh, within Kaiser Permanente. And actually, that is the reason why um, the reactions that occurred up in Alaska were caught. Um, the, the patients were being monitored. And so we're going to want to have those things in place um, for the ongoing year while we're administering the vaccine. The second thing I'll just mention is that with every new vaccine, whether it's COVID-19 or ones that we've introduced in the recent past, um, there is post-market introduction monitoring that goes on. So all the health systems like ours are actively contributing to uh, the data that the FDA as well as CDC are uh, collecting to make sure that we have a full understanding of the safety profile because we're going to you know, learn more. The, the initial uh, vaccine trials included 40 and 30,000 individuals, um, but we're gonna need a lot more to, to have a full safety profile. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.